Welcome to the SJ Child Show, where a little bit of knowledge can turn fear into understanding. Enjoy the show. Thanks for joining the SJ Child Show today. I'm really looking forward to this conversation with Caden. And McElwain, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, that's exactly how you pronounce it. Love it. And although I've had it pronounced many different ways. McLean, <laughs> McElwain, I've had the whole spiel. Yeah, well, I'm very phonetic, so I really hope that it sounds exactly like it looks when I look at it. <laughs> yeah, it does. So there we go. I was good to go on that one. It's so nice to meet you, Caden. Where are you calling or where are you at today in the world? Thanks for having me, Sarah. Uh, I'm calling from uh, Kent, Ohio, Kent State University, actually. I'm in the lounge area. Wonderful. It's so nice to have you. I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. So we're, we're a few states apart, but um, definitely it's so nice to have you. I love to be able to do this. And, um, you know, we wouldn't probably have ever met otherwise unless these wonderful platforms available to us to make these connections. Tell us a little bit, um, like an introduction to yourself, and then we'll get started on this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Kate McElroy. Wayne, I'm an autistic college student, writer, and activist, and I'm pretty much on a mission to go on various platforms and spread autism awareness throughout this country, because I personally feel like Congress doesn't pay enough attention to people with disabilities or autism. Uh, during my life, I was told by various people I wouldn't amount to anything because I had autism, but I was able to prove those people wrong and look at where I'm at now. Wow. I love that. And that's exactly why you're here on the show, because that's exactly the people I love to showcase and highlight are the people that said they said the I like to call them the fortune tellers, the future tellers um, give these this advice to parents that their child will never succeed and never be anything. And this humbosh of whatever it is, it's, it's not that was a made up word because it's a made up event. Right. Like right. humans have abilities past a doctor's ability to see into the future for that person. <laughs> so I think that it's amazing that you're here and tell us about kind of your journey and what that looked like. Um, what age were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed when I was two years old, coincidentally, after getting the smallpox vaccination. Uh, of course, it wasn't caused by the vaccination that was inherited. Did, uh, but uh, I just find it funny that it was right after I got that vaccination yeah. because of that conspiracy out there. In elementary school, I started out doing special education school. Well, if you know what I'm talking about, like full of therapy, ease, uh, group work, individual class, that kind of thing. And then my dad decided to go ahead and mainstream me when I was six years old. Old, because he knew I was capable of so much more than being someone who drills on himself making spaghetti necklaces in a <laughs> mental person's home, which is actually a running joke in my family. And in elementary school, that went smoothly. Well, I was terrible at math there. there uh, my teachers there were 100% supportive of me in elementary school. Well, well but middle school, my services were completely cut off without my parents' consent. My EP services, which I doubt they can do without parental consent. And uh, and when my parents asked my middle school why they did that, they said they couldn't tell I had autism. Some because I was doing so well academically and that they should just put me in a robotics camp. And my parents weren't going to tolerate that. So they wrote to various autism organizations in Tennessee, which is where the middle school was. And they wrote to a state senator. I mean, looking back at it, they probably should have sued the school for that. At, or filed an Americans Disabilities Act violation claim. But uh, that's never here nor there, as I say. And that lawsuit would have probably taken months and 
months of drama and court fees and lawyer fees and X, Y, and Z thing. thing. And my parents didn't want to go through that. So eventually they handled it civilly. And high school, my services were back. Were back to, but it was mainly just me having to go to a special education class for credit to help learn to make friends. And so, but uh, high school was a nightmare of bullying and teasing. And as I'm sure it is for anyone, regardless of disability. But to be fair, I was stick my nose in people's business back then, telling on people doing X, Y, and Z thing. So I kind of put myself in those situations. And I didn't know exactly what bullying was. Uh, so, but uh, then COVID happened. And, uh, and I had to go online, of course. And I found I could concentrate better online than in a traditional school setting thing. So uh, senior year rolled around and I was back in in-person school for a little bit, but after their, I got exposed with COVID and they weren't willing to give me makeup work to do at home, so I didn't miss anything. And after an incident involving an LGBTQ student where the school just sat by and watched them get bullied and didn't do their job, um, I asked my parents to go fully on line because in addition to my advocacy work for autism awareness, I'm an advocate for LGBTQ issues. I'm bisexual myself, of, and I know both of autism are more likely to identify as LGBTQ. I was able to graduate early from online high school after that, coincidentally, in Valentine's Day of 2022, so that was a nice gift. Left. And then college rolled around. I went to Lake Erie College for my freshman year. I'm a sophomore now. Oh, and that's where my advocacy journey began. And and the assignment was for a class project. We had to come up with a way to help the community and act upon it. So my group and I planned a GoFundMe page for Autism Society of America. Uh, and we actually raised over $1,000 for that. And what I found from my group was they only did the project to get the grade and to get the prize that we got for winning first place in competition we got. And I found that absurd and quite frankly offensive because the problem in this generation is we talk and whine and complain and moan and groan about things, but we aren't willing to help those people people because it involves work and having to and not be on TikTok and all that all the time and not laying around doing enough. And so I figured I could be a voice for that generation, be the one who takes action. So from that school project, the advocacy work grew into me giving speech, just going on shows like that, as planning yeah. out fundraisers. So, and uh, next verse, they have a ton of the support. And I'm actually going to be getting a proclamation from Portis County. Honey, which is a part of Ken for Autism Awareness Month. And they invited me to speak there. Caden, that's fantastic. It sounds like you've really, really put your passion into your daily life and took that dedication you have to autism advocacy and you're really out there making a difference. And that is the most important part of your journey is how you're making such a difference and you're coming from a place of living experience saying I was here I know what this is like I know what these kids need I know what these young adults need um because you know exactly what you could have needed better yourself and and know what supports you did get that helped you and I think that it's so important to share those things on these types of, of places so that we can really broaden the understanding on a global level, hopefully, of how important it is to be respectful of each person's journey. And like you said, how to create that space of, um, of learning, but not doing it just for a grade or just for a prize, but really taking it into consideration that these are your human counterparts in all areas. And when you go into the workplace, when you are at the shopping center, when you, and anything you do, 
You have to be around other humans. And if you don't try to even understand or learn how to respect life, then you're really short ending yourself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I nicknamed the logic that my generation has as doing tasks for brownie points and a piece of paper, which I find even more absurd. And I, I agree with you. We're all humans, so we should learn to interact with each other with kindness, no matter the disability, race, or sexuality. And quite frankly, I feel like everything starts at home. Parents are responsible for teaching certain values to their kids, and those kids will carry on those values into the real world. So if the parents teach kids to be kind to people, no matter what they're going through, they're going to be kind. If they teach them to be negative and nasty and to say all these slurs like the R and the N and all that, they're going to go out and be negative and nasty to people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and it, it is, I am a parent, so I see firsthand how some of the things, I mean, I've taught my kids great values, but they still do have uh, YouTube and TikTok and these other places. They're learning to speak in other ways that I haven't taught them. Um, and I have to remind them that's not really um, a useful way to use your communication. I think it's important that we put those guidelines in place because <clears throat> when they see other people doing it on these social media uh, platforms, they think that it's real life and that that's really how people are talking to each other, acting with one another. But for the most part, it's an act. And it's like, it's not real. I mean, people, of course, are on there speaking on with them, you know, by themselves and things. But for the things that are uh, not real, it's really hard for our kids, our young kids these days, to see what those differences are in real and fake. I agree. agree. And it's going to get even harder with AI and the digital deep fakes and all that. Absolutely. You're right about that. That is a really good point, too. How do you feel like um, AI is going to impact your future? And what what are you studying to, to do there at the university, by the way? Well, I'm studying to be a PR major, but I am a high critic of AI. Uh, for a class project, the yeah, an essay, to be exact, I interviewed Noam Chomsky, who's a really huge professor and activist. And he, he put it simply, AI is modern day plagiarism and more advanced plagiarism. And I agree. I think in the next five years, uh, we aren't going to have platforms like this anymore. Everything's going to be run with computers and laziness. So we are, we're already seeing it with QR codes where people can just scan and they can do whatever they like. I find those even more absurd than AI, quite frankly. Whenever I see a QR code, I ask, do you have a paper option, sir or ma'am, more they have, or them? Uh, I you really despise QR codes. I think they make this generation lazy. Yeah, I truly do. Occasionally, I'm met with one dirty look, but I don't care. Care, hub. <laughs> care. Human stuff is be better. But unfortunately, I got to get with top. I'm I truly do. You're and you're right about that. It's like we we have to. It's a double edged sword because we have to use what the newer generation is doing to be able to stay in connection with them and to be able to guide them in even in the places they know more about than we do. Um, we still have to to try to understand those things, and that takes some patience and some um, open mindedness to not shut everything down that you don't believe in right away. Um, and I think that it, on the other hand, it's like it can be so harmful and so um, uncontrolled and so predatory. Um, there's just so much out there you can't protect them from as well. Uh, that's it's really tricky. What was it like for you and how now, like, 
how is it in college? Have you made more friends? Is it, has it become more natural for you to, you know, to have that space for yourself? Absolutely. It truly has. There are a few things I don't get about college, but overall, I'm loving it. I'm making lots of friends. I have a couple of friends. I'm thriving academically. I actually have straight A's right now. And this past semester, even though I got an F in math, I still got my third consecutive dean's list. Wow. Congratulations, yeah, thank, Thanks. Thanks. The key is to bounce everything and put in the work. Work. Uh, that's what my dad always say, says. Uh, I'm in school to learn, not to fool around and go for rats and do X, Y, and Z fit thing. Uh, and in four years, uh, technically two. Yeah, two. I'm a sophomore right now. In two years, I'm going to have a big bill coming full of student loan debt that that I'm going to have to pay back. So if I thrive in my studies now, I won't have to worry about that asthma. Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, I'm excited for you um, in your, you know, college career, if you will, and going forward to um, experience all those experiences. What are your plans right now? What are you doing? Um, you said you're doing something on, on Thursday. What else, what other kind of events or things do you have coming up in the future? Well, that's a good question. As I said, on on first day at the time of this recording, I'm going to be getting a proclamation for Autism Awareness Month from Portage County, which is what Kent is a part of. And uh, currently for my own county, which is Lake County, also in Ohio, I got a Autism Awareness Month basket raffle plan for this amazing organization called uh, Lake County Special Needs Birthday Club, which throws Make-A-Wish style birthday parties for yeah. those who are on spectrum or have Down syndrome, ADHD, all those they do from ages six months to 100 years old. And, uh, and in June, I'm planning a, a voting event to help encourage my generation to go out and vote in the election. So there's going to be a bunch of different speakers there, which reminds me, I got a plan, I wanted to record the virtual speech for another one of my speakers. Curse, curse! I got an email that them, and then in the near future, sure, I'm planning on going into music PR. Or I've always been passionate about music as a career. I'm actually working as an assistant for a musician right now, Stephen Marks. Marks, he has a Beatles album called Beatles Sonic Melody. He's out on all platforms, and I definitely want to continue that because he work absolutely, and eventually. I want to shoot for the president's See, Once I'm 50 years old and I've had my fun and I have a lot of money without a care in the world, I definitely want to throw my, my hand in the ring for that election. I think wow. this country needs the first autistic president in American history. Kaden, that is the most beautiful goal and thing I, I've heard in so long. And I'm really, really proud of you. I believe in you. And I think that you can really set your mind to it and make some changes in the world. Your your passion is just so um, visual. And I, I can see just how passionate you are in all of it. And so I'm, I'm so, that's so exciting to hear that. That's exactly what we need. We need people who see the world differently than they have in the last 300 years and make real changes. Um, yeah, right. We need to reboot a whole bunch of things. Um, let's talk about your personal interests. Tell us about some interests that you might have, like music or think, talk to us about that a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I'm interested in music, pretty much any genre, technology. Gee, initially, I was a computer major, actually, because my dad works as an IT person, sitting the IT head of the, that department for IBM. So I come from a family of IT professionals, but technology and IT wasn't something I was passionate about, hence why I switched to PR. I'm interested in writing. I've been writing since I was 11 years old, old and I have some articles published, which I'll send and you once. So Great. we're done recording thing, or I'll put in the chat uh, once we're done. Um, and uh, pol politics and celebrity culture. Hmm. 
That's really interesting. I love that for you. And those are some really great hobbies and uh, diverse interests to be able to, to go into to do different things. I love music as well. And so do my kids who are both autistic. So I, I see the, the connection of, of how music can just like, it's so universal and it just can be enjoyed, you know, by so many, by so many people. Um, what type of work do you think we need to be doing as a society to be better autism advocates? Man, uh, pretty much every, everything thing. We need a complete reboot. Like you said, the schools need to do their jobs and not cut off uh, someone with autism services without parental consent and not do the bare minimum to meet federal requirements for complying with the uh, Title IX Act, Act, which prevents discrimination against those who are LGBTQ, disability, and race. I think for people, uh, they need to realize that we're all equal well, and we all have the same goal, and we need to come together and treat each other with respect. Uh, to, for governments, I say they need to introduce several bills for those with autism, mainly in special education fund funding and uh, for making it illegal, legal, 10 times more illegal than it is now, uh, to rob, assault, or murder or some with autism or take advantage of it, them. One proposal I have for a sentence would be 25 to lot. Life, 10 times more than what you would get if uh, someone were to assault a quote unquote normal person. Because those with autism don't know what's going on. They don't know what X, Y, and Z thing is. Uh, and I feel like people use that against them. So I think 25 to life for those with autism. Um, for those who commit crimes against those with autism, actually, would be a good fitting sentence. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and I, I like that you um, are bringing up these ideas because they they do need to be addressed. And um, thankful for you for being someone who is stepping into those footsteps to to take on those battles and. Um, it's really, it's really great. Do you personally have any mentors that you look up to? Mainly my parents. My parents, uh, they've been in my corner since day one of my life. And they are always there if, they, if I need advice. Even now, they're there yeah. for me. And another their mentor I have who's helped me out with fundraisers is my treasurer, Michael Zurin. And he, he's always promoting them and reaching out to people to help me make these fundraisers work. And for those who aren't my mentor, my influences are people like Temple Grandin, MLK, Malcolm X, Nietzsche, who was actually on the spectrum, believe it or not, Frederick mm -hmm. Nietzsche, Isaac Newton, who was also on the spectrum, Einstein, who was also on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I could go on and on about mentor and influences. I love that. I, I agree. Those are amazing people who have all brought their own piece of um, uniqueness and genius to the world in, in their own way. So I think that that's fantastic. And you do join the ranks of those amazing people and in all the work you're doing and everything, especially in your own community, where uh, they're obviously showing you that they're so grateful for you and your work that you're doing by getting a proclamation for your county. That's just so fantastic and goes to show all the hard work you're putting in um, from your own passion and experience. And thank you to your parents who sound like amazing people that, uh, yeah, I think that that's fantastic. Do you have siblings? Eight, eight, yeah, I have one older sibling and four younger ones. Okay, the, yeah, you mentioned that, right? Yeah. Four, four youngers. How is that? How is your relationship with your siblings? Well, with the older sister, it's a bit complicated. I can't go into that just because sure. of personal, but <laughs> I'm, I'm super protective of my younger siblings. And oh. we're super close. 
That's great. I grew up as an only child. So for me, it's so it's such a different experience, but I have, you know, two children that they have each other. <laughs> so different. Ex- I don't know what that's like for them, but yeah, I, it, that's amazing. Oh, Candon, it's been so nice to get to know you. Um, do you have a website or anywhere we could uh, follow you or social media as you want people to follow you on? Absolutely. You can follow me on Facebook, K-A-D-I-N Ronald. And you can follow me on Instagram at 73 posts here. Wonderful. Wonderful. I'll make sure when the transcription comes out that we get those links up there so that people can have an easy time going to support you. And especially those in Ohio who can make it to any of these events um, and go support Caden on this journey. That would be uh, highly recommended from the SJ Child Show. So uh, please go and do that as soon as you can. Uh, thank you so much, Caden. Any last advice you want to give anyone, everyone out there? Keep kicking butt. I love it. Just like you, follow your footsteps. Well, if you want to know what to do next, look what Caden's doing. Try to do that. <laughs> I love it. You're um, so nice to get to know you and to meet you. Thank you for your time and doing it at your school. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Sarah. It was really great. And I really hope we can stay in touch. All right, same. I'd like that. I'll talk to you soon.